Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate prism for decentration in the horizontal meridian. This surfacing technique can be used to position the optical center at the desired point on the lens blank. Prism for decentration or decentration on the blank is commonly used on oversized single vision lenses to help ensure lens cutout and it's commonly used on segmented lenses to position the major reference point at a specific point above the segment. Although this processing technique is determined, calculated, and performed by the surfacing equipment, and you'll likely never actually do this in practice, it's still a good exercise to help you examine the basic construction of lenses. So let's get started. First things first, what is prism for decentration and why do they call it that? Prism for decentration is a term used to describe a step in the surfacing process that allows the optical center to be positioned at the decentration point on the lens blank. Although the standard position is at the blank geometric center, some lenses allow for its position to be moved to the decentration point. When the optical center is moved away from the center of the blank, it results in a predictable amount of prism at that point. The term prism for decentration refers to the prism that's created at the blank geometric center that results in the optical center being moved to its desired position, or the prism at the geometric center that was used to create the decentration. Prism for decentration can easily be calculated using Prentice rule formula. All you'll need is the power of the lens and the amount the OC needs to be moved on the blank. It's important to note that this technique can only be performed on spherically designed front surfaces. It is not possible on aspheric design surfaces. When we're talking about spheric versus aspheric, we're referring to the front surface curve on the sagittal plane of the lens. This is the curve from the center to the edges of the lens going out, and it's often seen as the profile of the curve. A spherical front design has the same curvature across the lens from edge to edge, or the same radius of curve. The front curve is effectively cut from a perfect circle, so it's spherically shaped or spherically designed. This front curve design is often referred to as a simple sphere design because it's the simplest curve design available. Aspheric lenses, on the other hand, do not have the same curvature across the lens from edge to edge. On these lenses, as you move away from the quarter-sized spherical window at the center of the blank, the lens curvature begins to progressively flatten. This aspheric flattening produces a better lens profile and is designed to counteract peripheral aberrations or visual distortions in the lens. Due to the nature of aspheric surfaces, the wearer's eye needs to be positioned at the blank geometric center in order for the asphericity to work as designed. So prism for decentration is not possible on any aspheric front surface lens designs. This includes single vision, segments, and progressives. Now let's look at an example of how to calculate the prism and determine the base direction at the blank geometric center. Remember, to calculate the required prism for decentration, you'll need to know two things, the power of the lens and the distance we want to move the OC. Let's take a look at a one diopter spherical lens power that needs eight millimeters of decentration on the blank. The plus in front of the eight lets us know that the eight millimeters of decentration will be in towards the nose. Since we don't need the power sign and Prentice rule, we'll talk about whether the lens is minus or plus power after we go through the calculations. We'll need that to determine the base direction. To calculate the prism amount needed to move the OC 8 millimeters to the decentration point on a one diopter lens, we'll need to use Prentice rule. 8 times 1 divided by 10, and that gives us 0.8 diopters of prism. So in order to move the OC 8 millimeters away from the geometric center, there needs to be 0.8 diopters of prism at the geometric center. Easy, right? Now that we know the amount of prism needed, we need to determine the base direction to make sure that the OC is decentered correctly on the blank. If this lens had been minus power, let's say a minus 1, a decentered OC would create base out prism at the geometric center. The OCs were decentered in towards the nose and the resulting prism at the geometric center caused by the minus lens shape would be base out. If the lens had been plus power, let's say plus one, a decentered OC would create base in prism at the geometric center. 
Again, the OCs are decentered in towards the nose. The resulting prism caused by the plus lens shape would be base in. Unfortunately, the lab doesn't use base in or out prescriber's notation when it comes to the direction of the prism. Instead, they use the 360 degree lab notation. 360 degree notation uses specific meridians on the lens to designate placement. For horizontal prism, we only need to consider the 0, 180 meridian, but wherever the base of the prism is located, the specific meridian is used. If the base of the prism is located here, it has a zero base direction. If it's located here, it's 180 base direction. If it's located here, it has a 90 base direction. Or if it's located directly down, it's 270. This is important because it ensures the OC is decentered in the proper direction on the blank. Looking back at our previous examples, the OC of the right and left lenses needs to be on opposite sides of the geometric center. The right lens needs to have the OC on the right and the left lens needs to have it on the left. For minus lenses, the base direction of the prism would need to be at 180 on the right lens and at zero for the left lens. For plus powered lenses, the decentration directions are the same, but the base of the prism is opposite. The base of the prism needs to be at zero on the right lens and at 180 on the left. And so that's it. That's how you calculate prism and determine base direction for prism for decentration. Two things I want to point out. If the lens has cylinder power, you have to find the prism in the decentration meridian. For horizontal decentration like we're doing in this example, we would want to find the power in the 180 meridian. You can use tricks you've learned about prescription powers and how to determine the power in a particular meridian, or you can use the oblique meridian formula to straight calculate it, but whichever method you use to find the power in the decentration meridian, just make sure it's the exact power. In the scope of what we're doing, we need to use the exact power of the lens in the decentration meridian. Additionally, if the lens decentration had not been given to us, we would need to use decentration formulas to calculate what the decentration would be needed. So it's just an extra step in there. And there you have it. Now you can determine the prism for decentration needed to decenter the OC on the lens blank. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching.